trying to get things uh, set up here on a different machine. See how this goes. Another scene, I think. I'm trying to see how the green screen works. And let's see, I should also install Chatty. I don't have that right now. My goal for right now is to just get a little bit of stuff set up on Twitch for this uh, computer. Also in the middle of installing an update to Visual Studio. Use that to test how my green screen stuff is set up. Just go to filters, go to chroma key. There's a green screen. It's probably not very well lit because you can see there's a gradient to the color. So I'm not sure in that. No, I look awfully red, don't I? Hmm. That's kinda cool. Look, I'm barely there. whole window show up behind me when this is working. That's not good. <laughs> Alright. Well, I can't install chat right now because Visual Studio is installing so I'll just go out to see the chat on my other screen. See if anyone's actually here. Well, there's like two of you. Excellent. Stream setup, probably some code. Five of you. Even better. Alright, mute that. Alright. Hey look, it's an ad. Alright, so if I want to be able to see that behind me, that looks not terrible. Very red, very blue. I don't know. How awful is that? Probably not too bad. Probably tweak it some, maybe. Go with that. Alright. So that's good. We'll close that out. Now we've got this. We can make this bigger or smaller. On my other machine, I've got the chat running in here. I don't have that uh, source set up here yet. Um, so I probably won't mess with that here today. I don't want to spend a whole ton of time just working on this. But this is my my setup. Um, from home now I don't have quite as much uh, bandwidth as I have at the office. At the office I've got fiber. At home I've just got uh, whatever, Time Warner or Spectrum cable modem. Um, so you can see we're running at 4 kilobit per second 
hopefully that's doing all right in terms of uh, quality of the stream. Um, almost done installing Visual Studio, that's great. And let's figure out what we're going to do today after this. So let's see, last week we were working on uh, getting the specification stuff out into NuGet, and the time before that we were working on some stuff with uh, the DevBetter website, which I'd like to get back to at some point. There's some, some things I want to add to that. Uh, anybody have any votes for what, what we should work on this week? Could be something totally different. We just do a coding kata or some TDD. The beauty of this is you can you can participate. Log into Twitch. I can log in. I was going to type something in the chat, but it won't let me. Let me make sure I'm logged in. Code. All right, now I'm logged in. And there's Chatty starting. So let's do that. I'll throw this over here so you all can see it. I don't need this anymore. So install Chatty. Visual Studio must be close enough to done because it let this other installer kick off. Finish that. Alright, so I was trying to send a message in the chat just to say hey. And that works. Perfect. And that's from the browser. And then Chatty should kick off here in a second. There's that. Good. The green screen is not perfect, I see, but I'll work on that some more later. There's that. Here's Chatty. Chatty's a tool you can use to connect to Twitch chat. Hey, SMA book. You gotta figure out how to say your name on these times. You're SMAB from the UK. Is it SMAB UK? Alright, let's see. I want to connect my account to this channel. I think I need to log in. Mine, so I create a login. I can't remember doing this last time, but apparently I need to do all this. So I copy that URL over into my browser. I have to OAuth. That's what it's doing. All right, it's OAuthing me to Twitch. So authorize. Say close. Connect. All right, bam. Now I'm in Chatty, and you folks should all show up here. Right? Theoretically, I think it doesn't pick up historic messages, so it's only going to show new ones. And there's maybe all right, good. My volume always seems lower than others. Well, that's good to know. Thank you. Um, it's kind of maxed out, isn't it? So you probably don't care about desktop audio, so we'll mute that. Let's see which uh, which mic are we using now? Because it should be using this big mic up here doesn't look like it is. So that's probably what the issue is. So let me see. Properties. Use. Let's go with this one. Okay. Is it better now? You're going to hear. 
everything probably. Um, tell me if that mic's better. I thought it was on that one already, but apparently not. It was probably using this one before, which is why it's quiet. It's because it's way up there on top of my head. Out of the way. Much better. All right, cool. Thank you. We're all learning together here. Um, all right, so any votes on what we've spent some time working on? I have a zillion different GitHub projects and things that I can jump in on. What do you guys want to see? I'm going to do testing, I'm going to do ASP.NET Core. Nothing. Leave it up to me. Alright, well I have a client that needs to do some uh, web API testing and so I can stand a bone up on that and uh, add some additional tests to the Microsoft sample that's out here for eShop on web. Um, it's, a, it's a nice feature of ASP.NET Core to be able to write, write these tests. So let's let's knock some of those out. That's always good to just add some tests to the project. Do testing. All right, let's do that. Cool. Um, look at that. Right where we left off, it's a test. So this is the homepage test for this project. All right, so let me give you something random. <laughs> All right, we're going to do random testing. Let me give you uh, this URL. Just search for eShop on web. It'll be the first hit, and it looks like this. Uh, and it has this ebook that goes with it, so you can go read this ebook. It's free, it's just a PDF. And uh, that's about all you need to know about this. I need to get latest on it. Uh, but the uh, URL is here. I'll pop, pop that into the chat for you. So, this over here out of your way. Alright. And. Let's close down all the other windows. Close all of this. And someone tell me, can you read the text on this okay? Because I've had problems with the quality of the stream before where everything's all fuzzy and you can't see it. So, anyone have problems reading what's on the screen now? All right, no one's saying they have problems, so I'm going to assume you're good. All right, so let's uh, get latest on this, because I'm sure I haven't in a while, and there's been a bunch of updates. So we'll go here, and sync, and pull. And then we'll run it and make sure it runs, because that's always good. And we'll run the existing tests, because that's also always good. And see where we're at. All right, updated. Great. Let's make sure this is the startup project. It is, so we're going to run. Looks good. Could be a little bigger. I can do that. I don't want that. It all seems huge on my end, but on well, the other thing I can do, let's go to 18. Since I don't have all the other stuff running, uh, like the chat in the stream this time, um, there's no reason for this not to be full screen. So we'll pull that out to there, and that should make it a little bit easier to read as well. Alright, so hopefully that helps. Boom. Okay. Now if I keep streaming from this computer, I'll get it set up with more bells and whistles for the stream, and I might have to make the screen for the code a little bit smaller next time, but... For now, this should be good. All right, so this thing is still trying to build the first time. Hopefully it gets through that quickly. I wonder how my CPU is doing on this stream. I was looking at that last time I boosted things. That could affect why the build's taking a while. So looking at uh, just open resource monitor. See what's using up all our CPU here. Uh, 
that's great. OBS is not the culprit. Looks like just uh, security checks are really eating up the CPU at the moment. So that's good that I've got plenty of room to go on OBS. All right, good, good, good. And of course it didn't work, so there are build errors. What were the build errors? I don't know. Let's see, it's not clear which file to import. Really? It's interesting. There's only one variables folder here. not add this SCSS stuff here, so I'm not sure what I need to do here. It's not clear which file to import for variables. Candidates are underscore variables SCSS or CSS. Interesting. So probably the CSS should go somewhere else, or do I just have to put the name in there? I wonder if I do this. Will that fix it? And if so, is it the right thing to do? That seems to have done it. All right. I'm an SCSS wizard. All right, so here's the app running. Um, it's got a bunch of products that you can buy and you can add them to your basket. And you can update your total and all this should work. And when you're ready, you can <clears throat> check out. Checkout requires you to log in. Uh, you should be able to log in as this demo user here. That's a demouser that gets rid of mice. All right, and then uh, password. And we won't remember, but log in. And that should work. All right, and then I should be able to see my orders. And that order should be there, but it's not. So that's a bug. It's supposed to transfer it over once you log in. I think it'll work the second time. It used to work. Uh, let's do a different product just to make sure we can tell the difference. Uh, we got rid of that. That's interesting. How do you get rid of a product? It's probably a feature we'd like, isn't it? Huh. Okay, fine. that one showed up. That's the one I just did. But the first one it lost, and I'm sure it lost it because of the handoff from anonymous to logged in user, because the card ID has to get associated with the user as part of that step. And like I said, that used to work. So this would be something that we could run some tests for, so that's good. All right, so let's also see how our tests are doing currently. So we'll run all tests in Visual Studio. And these are X unit. There's a variety of tests. There's not that many. It's because uh, it's just a sample app. <clears throat> and it's discovering all the tests, and they're blowing up for some reason. So we'll see which ones are broken. Okay, so our 21 unit tests are all good. Our four integration tests, which are mostly with uh, Entity Framework, those are all working. But our functional tests are breaking. We've got uh, some things with account controller sign in. I think that's because recently we changed some of the URLs for that. And we needed to make sure we ran those tests, I suppose. And then uh, order index on get should return a redirect. And that's given us the same error with the sign in. So I'm pretty sure these are all a result of recent changes to that URL, which I think we switched from sign in to login. Let me verify that by running it again and we'll fix these tests. All right, so here's this. We will log out. We will log in, and down there at the bottom, I'm looking and I see it's identity account login uh, is where it should go, All right? And that's here in the URL. Uh, so I want that to be what my tests are looking for. So let's go find this test and 
it's going to go here, I think. So we'll just save that and run this test, verify that that's good. Now one thing I don't have working on this sample is continuous integration, which is why this didn't get caught uh, earlier. Uh, so that's on the list of things to add, but I don't have direct access to the repo because it's owned by Microsoft. So it's it's uh, a request I've put in to, to get that. All right, so this failed again. And it says, could not find slash identity account login in that localhost account login question mark return URL. So it went to the right place. It went to account login not identity account login, but that's fine. Uh, but this is what it's looking for, and that looks to be correct. So I will say that this should just contain not identity account login, but account login, and try that. And it's green. Okay, so other tests that were failing, so let's pin this over here, were here, and they're going to be similar. So this is failing because it's looking for sign dash in, and we're thinking it's account login. So we'll save that and run this test. And we'll hope that it turns green. And it does not. Oh, why does it not? What is, what is your problem? Response does not indicate success. 404 not found. Returns form with request verification token. What am I hitting? Account controller sign in. Alright, so when I come to account controller sign in, allow auto redirect is false. Let's start from here. That should be account login. Or was it really? calling me from France. Hopefully it's not one of you. Can't take their call right now. Alright. That failed as well. Response to 404. Okay. So when I go to just slash account slash login, it gives me a 404 and sends me somewhere else. Do I still have it running? Here because it's identity account login, right? I go to slash account login, it's going to say, boom, 404. But if I go to slash identity account login, it's going to work fine. OK. But why did I not use the whole thing on the other one? It's confusing. So but let's just take care of this here and here. Now this is an example, <clears throat> uh, I'm looking at this one that's fetching the same URL, and this one here fetching that same URL, that's some duplication in our tests that we probably would want to clean up. Um, but let's just run all these tests here real quick and see if I've solved the problem. That one's green, that one's green, this one is still red. And that's because of this one. One more time, save that, run this. And it's green. All right, so let's just verify that we can run all the tests. And really, just fixing these tests should be its own commit. So I'll create a quick branch and commit that back to the repo. Notice this uh, odd thing about the Microsoft Test Explorer here. It's saying this took 16 seconds to run these functional tests. We know it didn't, right? I mean, we can, we can run them again and watch this number. As these things start to go, 
it adds them all up, even if they're running in parallel. So even though a bunch of these things took like three seconds, three milliseconds, whatever, um, it sums them up and gets the 17 second number because of, of some of these. Well, maybe I'm wrong. No, it looks like maybe it's doing the right thing now. Uh, in another project I've got, we've got a whole bunch of these things and it'll often run for like, you know, a minute and then it'll say it ran for 60 minutes. But this actually looks like a proper amount because each of these ran for three seconds. It's definitely not adding all of those up, is it? Yeah, I can't tell. We don't have enough uh, enough tests there to really make it make a difference. All right, so let's do our commit. I'm gonna come down here. I want to create a new branch. New branch. Dallas slash fix tests. All right, and we'll check out that branch, and then we will figure out how Visual Studio wants us to do commits, which looks to be this. And what did we do? Fixed SCSS variable, variables, reference, issue, and fixed tests relying on slash sign in, renamed to slash login. Commit all that. And we can do a pull request. There's a way to do that from here now, isn't there? Maybe. I don't know. I'm going to have to go out to GitHub. So, bounce out to GitHub. Here, github.com. Uh, each up on web. And we're going to go to pull requests, and GitHub should realize that there's. Oh, I got to push my change. That's what I didn't do. Sync. And push. Do it. What are you doing? Oh, you're just being slow. Okay. Failed. Look at the output window. Authentication failed. Oh, it didn't. Come on. Uh, let's go. Do it from the command line. So we go to eShop on web, open up PowerShell, like that. Maybe this will let me do it. Uh, it wants the login. All right. Text me the number. All right. Boom. All right. That means Visual Studio also should hopefully start working. And we're there. So now we can go back to here and it finds it. So we'll do a pull request. Tests. And like I said, normally I would want there to be a build right here, um, but I don't have access to that on .NET architecture, so uh, we'll get that there soon. But we'll just go ahead and merge this. And we don't need the branch anymore, so we're all set. And we have tests that pass now. Now, some of you might notice this guy up here on the left. Uh, it's a Chrome plugin uh, called Octotree, which I've mentioned the last couple times I've streamed, because people have asked, so I'm just kind of preempting that. Um, and one of the things that I don't think I showed previously that it does that's really nice is on pull requests, it'll actually show you the files that are just part of the pull request. All right, so you can bounce around in here and use this as a way to, to easily see what files are involved in a pull request that you're reviewing. So in addition to all the goodness that it offers in the regular code view, where you can use it to kind of look around inside the code, like a Solution Explorer style view. Um, it also has that nice feature when it comes to pull requests. So if you do anything with GitHub and you use Chrome, and I think they also have plugins for Firefox, I'm not sure about Edge or IE, um, go grab Octotree, it's really nice. Okay, 
So we're done with that. We're going to go back to master. And we're going to do a sync pool thing. I'm really not good at Visual Studio for this, but I'm trying to get better at it. So sync. <clears throat> and did you do it? Yeah, hopefully we're good. Should be all set. Um, let's run all these tests one more time. And let's think what is going on that we need a new test for. So it seems to me that when we create a new uh, cart and then we log in, that that part is not working. It used to work, uh, but it doesn't seem like it's working now. So let's think if we can write a test for that. Um, and let's see, web functional test controller. The endpoint that hits is... I forget, is it order? I think it's order. Let's go look at the browser one more time. So run the thing. Here it is. Add item to my cart. I want to check out. Checkout goes to basket checkout is where it's going to redirect me. Um, so I started out trying to go to basket checkout, not logged in. It should redirect me to login, and then if I log in successfully, it should check me out, and I should have that in my orders. So do I have a checkout? Do I have any basket tests at all? Where does basket even go? my orders. Oh, it's a page. That's what I, that's why I can't find it. It goes to this razor page, basket checkout. All right. So this, uh, this sample has both razor pages and MVC controllers in it, just because it's meant to be able to show you how to do both. Uh, and so you just have to find the right place. Probably in a real application, you would pick one or the other for most of your work. Um, certainly you'd use controllers for your API. Um, but you'd probably standardize on one or the other for your, your view-based stuff. Razor Pages is actually very good for this view-based stuff. Uh, but I suspect that this is actually what introduced the bug, was when we switched this one over to use Razor Pages. Not because of a problem with Razor Pages, but because we changed stuff. Um, Alright, so when we do a post to check out the basket, it's going to set all the quantities uh, for this basket model to be the ones that are in this items list, which is a dictionary. And I'm going to call the order service. We're going to call the basket service to delete the basket. That might be a bad thing. Maybe this is not doing what it's supposed to do. If we're deleting the basket, no, that's okay. The basket should go away because we've created the order. The trick is that this order is not being associated with the new user. So I probably, if I looked at the data model, I'd find that there is a uh, an orphaned order out there that's not associated with the logged in user. Uh, and then redirect to page is just going to redirect to itself, which will just be a, a getter. And that's going to hit this thing and just load the, the basket, I think. All right, so let's see that one more time in here when we log in. It already says, thank you for your order. That's that's this page, basket checkout. All right, so cool. And if we looked at the net tab for this, just reload it. Go out to eShop on web. We'll add a t-shirt. We'll say checkout. And we should see a checkout post with a 302 that redirected to checkout with a 200. So that's our post redirect get pattern that we're using. Uh, all right, so I want to verify that that works in a test. So down here, I don't have any basket tests. Uh, I have home page on get, but we want to do a basket post, I think, um, like a basket checkout. So let's just copy this one for now get that done. So we'll say basket checkout. Might need to rename that eventually. But 
that. I like the page in there better. Since I seem to be following that convention. There's that. Alright. So we're going to create our HTTP client using this custom web application factory. There's good docs on this out on docs.asp.net uh, under integration testing. But uh, I'll show you what ours looks like right here real quick. So essentially this web application factory is used to create uh, your in-memory web server. So it uses the same type of logic that you see inside of your program.cs in ASP.NET Core, where it builds you a web host using a web host builder. Um, in this case, one of the things I'm doing is I'm configuring uh, the services to be a little bit different in my web app when I'm testing it uh, from how it would be in production. So in here, I'm specifying that I want to use an in-memory database, uh, and I'm doing that for the two DB contexts that I'm using. One is for the catalog, one is for identity. Uh, likewise, I add the identity stuff, and then we build the service provider. The other thing that this is letting me do is seed some data. So all this code here, it's just uh, a fair amount of code, but really its only purpose is to give me some sample test data during my test runs. Uh, so this is going to get reset for each one of these tests uh, and make sure that I've got sample data that I can look for when I run my test. All right, so I think I think my seed data, and so that's just the catalog. This one's, okay, here's the app identity. So this should be creating that demo user for me. So if we go to see what it's doing, there's the demo user. Okay, so in my test, I should be able to log in as demo user. Okay, so let's uh, go back here, and let's figure out what we want to do. So we want to arrange and act. First thing we're going to do is in here, we're going to add something to our cart, because I don't think it's going to let me uh, check out necessarily if I haven't got anything in my cart. So we'll do... Is this here every t oh I know why <laughs> that's the bug we're trying to fix okay so we want to add something to the basket first and that is doing what let's just submit add to basket <clears throat> don't recall where that code is. It's not orders. So on the home page, let's look at the home page. Pages. Index. Here's all the items. And each item has component that goes with it, which is this basket item component. No, that's not it. Where's the component for the page? That's not it. There's a partial Product for catalog item. Partial name is product. Oh, there it is. All right, product. Okay, so here we've got the picture and all the things, a bunch of hidden variables, and this is our form, and we do a post to basket index. Okay. So we find the basket right here. Uh, index, there we are. There's our post. So this is what's adding the item to the cart. So if I post to basket index, it will add some item to the cart, which will be determined by the information that I'm posting, which is coming from here. Mostly the ID being the important one. Um, all right, so let's do basket page checkout. I'm gonna go to basket slash basket slash index. And this has to be a post. 
Uh, do I have any other examples of posts? I think I must. Post. All right, here's how we do a post. So we take those key values uh, and we do a post async and we pass in that form content. So let's do that. We'll just borrow that code. We'll come over here and paste it in and get rid of that. Slash basket slash index. Why? That's still a sign in. I thought we fixed all those. I guess I should have done a search and replace. That's going to be a problem probably at some point. Uh, we'll do a, yeah, it should do a success status code. So the things that we're passing in with these list of value pairs are going to be the things that are on the product. And that's going to be, pull up the browser window for a sec, see how we're doing. Cool. All right. Uh, we need ID, name, picture URI, and price. I think ID is really the main important one. Um, so in here, here we're gonna do ID, name, price might be important. Um, we'll just pass these in strings. We don't really care. Now I did seed that data uh, with with actual f items. So I could pull these values from that seed data, and that might be good to do at some point, but for now I just want to see if this works. So in this method, I grab and add all the things. And so here we are. We've got a sweatshirt with a price of 1950 um, and all that other info, but it doesn't have the ID. But I'm guessing it's going to be ID 1 to start. So, shirt, we'll say this is 1949, just so I can tell it's different. And we'll give it an ID of 1. And we'll figure out why this is all red. We need to pull in that namespace. That's control dot that I just hit and then enter to quickly add that using statement. Okay. Uh, so now we're going to do a post to there. Expect to get status code, and then it should be in our basket, right? So uh, we'll get the response, and then it does a what? Does it do a redirect? I think it does. So looking back at uh, basket index, which was maybe this one. Nope. Too many things called index. Here's our basket index. Uh, it's going to map all that to a catalog item view model. It's going to make sure we don't have a null ID. And it's going to call this set basket model async, which will check and see if we're signed in and do something. Otherwise, mess with our cookies. And then create the basket for the random username that we're going to have, which is going to be this GUID here. All right, so that's probably what's going to happen. But when we're done, um, it's going to 302 to the page. So then we want to follow that redirect to get the actual response, um, which means that in here, I did not tell it not to follow redirects. Um, client dot default where was that is there already a waiting that's just task items wasn't on there Allow auto redirect. Oh, it's this web application factory client options. All right. I think I want to allow that to be true, which may be the default. But let's let's just be explicit about it. The reason I want that to be true is that after it does the post and then it wants to 302 to load the page, 
I want to let it do that. And so if it says to not allow it, then of course that won't work. So I'm going to be explicit and expect that after we do this post, it's going to 302 and this post response will hopefully be the actual page coming back and not just the response from the post, which is going to be a 302. So we'll break point on that just to see what we get. And with that, let's build this and see what we, what we get. Build succeeded, so now we can debug to here. <clears throat> and I'm hoping that we're going to get the, the basket page back, which we can check and see if it has the item. Uh, to debugging. blew up before it even got here. What was the error? Ah, uh, anti-forgery token. Yeah, those silly things. Alright, so we need to make sure we also grab the anti-forgery token and that we are passing it in here as well. And I solved that problem previously. Uh, here. No. One of these, one of these pages had anti-forgery token there. So return form with request verification token and get the request verification token to use. Projects matches valid request verification token. So all, right, all that stuff is working under account sign in. I just need to pull the parts of it I want. Over into this piece because it should be the same. I think this, I'm going to have to hit the home page, pull the token off, and then do the next request. Alright, so this is where things start to get convoluted. So the first thing we need to do is hit the home page. So let's go grab our home page. Let's grab that code. Go here. Load home page with that. Uh, all right, and then get the request verification token. So that's its own method. That can go there. The string input is going to be that string response. So string request verification token equals get request verification token off string response and then I need to add that to my key values here which I should have here All right. <clears throat> let's just call this token to be consistent So we're going to fetch the home page, we're going to get the token, we're going to construct the things we want for our post, encode them, post them, everything should be good as soon as we pull in another using statement, control dot, rebuild, and also that with link. One. Yeah, Smaybook, this is probably the best sample I can tell you to look at. Um, this along with my uh, clean architecture sample, which doesn't have a ton. So your question in chat, since uh, people on YouTube won't be able to see the chat this time because I didn't include it in the video, is... Uh, Really need to start writing some tests for my ASP.NET Core projects. This seems like a good project to examine for samples, unless you can suggest anything better. So that uh, eShop on web is good. 
And then if you want a, a starting point for your applications, use this clean architecture solution starting point. Uh, there's a project template you can get for it. So you can just do file new project and have it show up. But it includes these types of tests as well. So down in here, there's you know, a custom web application factory, just like I'm showing you. Um, and there's also a few tests. You know, it's a it's a solution starter. It's not a like it's a template. It's not a sample app, so it doesn't have as much code in it as eShop on web does. But it does get you started with look. Here's how you write a simple test to verify that the homepage loads and has whatever in it, right? So so check out our Dallas Clean Architecture and check out um, .NET Architecture eShop on web. Would be the two good places to look for these type of samples. All right, so we are ready to debug this again. See if the auth token, request verification token rather, uh, is good to go. And the test passes. How does the test pass? That's weird. Aren't you supposed to hit my breakpoint? This is why when you're doing testing, you always want to be able to see your test fail. Because um, that seems like it passed, and that's weird. So I just run the test. Test run finished. Everything works. That's weird. Now it fails. So it really is getting that sweatshirt. That's good. That's because that was ID 1, so that part's working. So the only thing that's really not working is it just didn't hit my breakpoint, I guess. Um, and if I were to put in ID 2, which is not a sweatshirt, I should expect this to give me something else. at what it tells me, it's going to say failure didn't contain .NET black sweatshirt, instead it contained what? Use my items, .NET black and white mug is what it contained. That seems like it works. Alright, so I think I want it to be number two, just to be a little safer, that I'm not just grabbing the, the randomly first item in the collection for some reason, because that's not good. Um, so done that black and amp white mug. Let's see if we can match on that. Boom. Run. I need to rename this test because that's not the name, definitely. Okay, it worked. Let's add, add item to cart there. And this is basket page checkout. I haven't even gotten to the checkout yet. Uh, redirect. We'll leave that assertion in there for now. Um, but once we've added the item to the basket, the next thing we want to do is check out. Let's look at our code when we run it. This, I think, is still running. It is. 
turret. So we come in here, we add the item to the cart, that brings us here. And when we check out, if we inspect this, it's going to be input type submit, going to slash basket slash checkout. And if we look at network, and we clear everything, and we hit checkout, the very first thing we get is a checkout being a 302. So that's what I want my test to say, is that when I do a post to basket checkout, regardless of what I send it, uh, it's going to 302 me because I'm not logged in. Okay, so our third request is going to be another one of these. I'm going to say var post response to equals that to basket checkout with nothing, doesn't really matter. I'm hoping it'll let me get away with that. And then I want to assert dot equal um, and post response to dot status code there and what's your, what your type, HP status code. So I want you to be HP status code dot Temporary redirect? Temporary redirect. That should be a 302. But you say it's a 307. Um, what is a 302? Just redirect. There we go. That's weird, because there's another thing called a permanent redirect, which is a 301, but alright. So that's what I'm expecting to be this whole test is that it redirects to login if not authenticated. Right? So we'll build that, run that. And it fails. And I expected to redirect, but I actually got it not found because basket checkout's not right. I thought that's what we said it was going to. Basket checkout. So why would I get a 404 going to basket checkout? Did I do a post? I thought I did. It shouldn't be case sensitive. These are all the things running through my head. That's a post. That's the right case. Maybe this really needed to be something. Like a... Where's that? Form content. Did I just move that up? No, it has to take something. So we can say keyValues.clear and Form content equals new formula encoded content of key values. Just to be sure that that's not the problem, and we'll pass in that form content. All right. Route certainly isn't case sensitive. Yeah, I wouldn't expect it to be. We've been using not case sensitive everywhere else, so there's no reason why that should be biting us. Um, but we're getting a 404. Still red. Expected redirect, actual not found. Interesting. So down here, let's see if it'll let us debug into it this time. Let's see what's going on. That got big. not hitting breakpoints for some reason. I don't know why. Related? Who knows? Expected redirect. Actual not found. 
The only place I'm expecting a redirect is right here. Post response to, post response to, wait, client, post async, ask checkout. All right, well, let's go back to the browser. We didn't actually try clicking on it, so let's see what happens when we do. So we can come here, just go look at our basket. Basket's empty. Add the item to our basket. There it is. We'll click checkout. Let's clear this. And we did do this. We did look at this. So there's checkout. Slash basket, slash checkout. And that's not what I wanted to do. And there's our request URL with a post with a 302. So is it 404ing because I didn't send it the request verification token, maybe? That might be what it is, because I need that every time. That should give me an error, though. It shouldn't give me a 404. That should be the same token, I believe, as I had up there. But I don't expect this to do anything. I don't like using the debugger, but when I want to use it, it'd be nice if it would actually break on the breakpoints. That's that makes it more useful. Redirect not found. All right, so same deal. Anybody from the peanut gallery have any? You're compiling in release mode, not debug. Uh, that might be why I'm not able to hit breakpoints. That's helpful to know. Thank you. is an unexpected error. I guess that's progress. Check the output pane for details. I guess I need to rebuild. Could not find functional test.dll. So that was good. Let's see if we can debug it now. Fingers crossed. Does it hit the breakpoint? Sweet. All right, Smebuck, you rock. Um, all right, but what's going on here? We're going to hit Ask a checkout with our form content. Form content just has yeah, it's not really helpful. Um, form URL link. Yeah, that's oh well, that all looks right. Okay, so let's see what this thing looks like when we step over. Get this. It 
does just give me a not found. Interestingly, it's saying not found, but it's sending me the login with the return URL like it should. Account login return URL. So, oh shoot, you know what? I know why. I know why. I did it. Right here. Allow auto redirect. Since I'm allowing auto redirect, of course. It's not going to let me actually see the redirect here. Uh, and I wanted to allow redirect auto elsewhere, but not here. Here I want to actually see it. So let's see if I can, can I change that easily. Or do I have to create a whole new client? I don't want to create a whole new client. Um, I guess I just need to expect that it's going to go to that other page. But why is that page given a 404? That's the other question. So the redirect, all right, let's finish this up. The redirect's working. I'm just not going to see it. So I can't do this. Uh, instead, it should bring me here. And it's not. So we add this item to my basket and we say check out. Let's clear this again. All right, we're going to get that redirect, but we don't care because we're going to auto follow it. And we should get to here. And it should be looking for slash identity account, all that. And it should have auto followed to this location. So that's what I'm expecting, is identity account login. Yeah, well, I got your comment, Smithwick, and it helped out, so thank you. All right, I still don't know why I'm getting a 404. I think it's the test is going to a different place than this is going to. So in production, we go to slash identity, slash account, slash login. In the test, we seem to be going to the old URL. Um, should go to that. No, slash identity account login. And really, I can just do a check that it contains that, right? Assert contains. Here. This will be post response to dot uh, URL, maybe. It's not, not the content, maybe it's a header. Somewhere that URL, somewhere that data is in there. Um, not sure where yet. So let's debug this one more time. Jump over. Post response to has, post response to here has request message. Let's see, that's right in the middle of me in the stream. How can I get that out of there? There we go. Uh, 404 not found for account login with return URL. So the question is. Get to that request URI off of request message. I expect that that contains identity account login, maybe. Um, post response to dot request message. Yeah, you're not gonna let me. 
snap a screenshot of that because it won't be there when I stop debugging. Alright, so here, post response to dot request message dot uh, request URI. That's the second part. And the first part is slash identity slash account slash login because that's what it is in production and that URI needs to be two strings maybe okay so I should be able to run this test without debugging and it should say I does not contain the string Search where the identity came from. It's from your cookie. My cookie's not the one saying where to go with the login, is it? There's no identity here yet. I'm anonymous. All right, so slash account slash login. Tell me more, destroyed QC. If you search where the login came from, it's from your cookie. Okay. Am I putting in that in the cookie somewhere? Did I set that up in here perhaps? Because I know we changed it in startup. Right, if we look in startup for the application, there's a cookie options. Configure application cookie, right? Yeah. That's what I'm looking at. And Your application cookie. Where do, where are you looking at? You see that code there in startup. All right. Yours is different from mine. It's like you've got an older version or something. So what what line of code are you on? solution let's look for configure application cookie all right find all only one of them and right there and it doesn't have anything to do with account login how much is testing valued for a junior dev as a candidate for a job uh, well this kind of testing that I'm doing is a little bit tough uh, and, and somewhat more advanced, so if, if it's not something that uh, seems like it's working great for you, I totally understand. Um, but unit testing, I would value tremendously highly, because if you know how to write unit tests, and you know how to, more importantly, you know how to write code that can be unit tested, uh, which generally means in C-sharp that it's going to follow the solid principles, then that's huge. That's like most career developers right now don't know that stuff. Um, now, it'll depend on where you're going looking for the job, because if you're going to a place where they don't do any unit testing, they're not going to know what it's worth. Um, but if you go to a shop that actually gets it and writes tests and knows how to write tests, uh, if they don't have to teach you that and you show up and they're like, hey, solve this problem, and the way you solve it is writing unit tests, um, you're going to impress the hell out of them, because universities, by and large, don't teach it. Options.login path. Sure, we can try that. Now, the thing to point out here is that we're using uh, a new feature, relatively new feature, which is that all the login stuff is coming in through this identity pages thing. Uh, and that's why some of those routes say slash identity. Um, so I would uh, expect that that path is coming in because of this. And it has its own hosting startup here, but it's not doing anything at all, right? There's nothing different here. 
Um, hmm. Use the default identity route. That's what I'm doing. All right. So let's run all these tests again. The one we're trying to make work is going to fail. So we've not found identity account login in account login, right? And then account login gives me, of course, a 404. Does it do that in production? I think it did. I think we tried that, right? So I come in here and I say, you know, let's just go to account login. Do I 404 there? I 404 there. All right. So the test is doing exactly what production would do, except for the fact that it's sending me to here instead of identity account login, which probably just means that when I set up the, the test web server, I didn't do something just right. And we recently swapped out that stuff to use the, the separate package, the separate area for identity. You use the default identity route, it'll be without identity now. Right, why is it without identity now? So that's the question is, is there something that I don't do in here? Oh, I see what you're saying. If I rebuild, it'll be without identity now because I set that cookie that way. Right? Is that what you're saying? Because I did this? Let's see if that's right. So do that. Relaunch the app. And you're saying you think that if I go here, and then I say check out, and there it is, still identity. So I just relaunched it with that change and it didn't care. I wish it cared. That would be nice. Destroyed QC. Um, but I think you are onto something. I think if I put this application cookie info into my test, maybe that'll work. So that, that got taken out because it was just the default anyway, I think. And anyways, we just saw it didn't change anything. Without this line in your code, your test uses the default slash identity account login provided by identity. But it's not. My test is not using that. My test is looking for, you, you, you're telling me the reverse, right? Test is looking for slash account slash login. Prod is looking for slash identity. Right? And this line of code is not changing it one way or the other. It's just being tacked onto the area, it seems like. Okay, so in startup, let's go start at the beginning. This startup's fairly complicated. In startup, let's start with a constructor. We pull in configuration data from here. And in here, uh, we set up a logger, we do some data seeding. Okay, nothing in here has to do with identity. So this is where the program begins. Then it calls into startup, constructs startup, configure development services. Are we running in development mode? I think we are. We look at our properties, we look at our launch settings. I'm running IS Express. IS Express is in development mode. So we are launching in development mode. And so we're going to use an in-memory database. And we're going to configure in-memory database for catalog and in-memory database for identity. Uh, we can ignore this configure production services because we're not doing that. And then we'll get in here. We're going to configure cookie settings, which we just looked at. And then we're going to configure create identity if not created. That might be 
relevant. So what does that do? New scope, create the existing user. Existing user manager, right? And this got set up. There's, this exists because I set it up in program.cs. And we add all the stores, all right. And then configure cookie settings got called previously and it did these things. And I'm not doing any of this inside my test which might be the problem. So, just looking for that. Yeah, that's my comment. Um, all right, so where's my... Let's go to my web application factory. Here's how I'm setting things up. I am using a reference to startup here, uh, but before I call startup, I'm configuring a bunch of stuff, similarly to how uh, program.cs is doing the same type of thing. So I have a builder. I create my in-memory database things, create the scope, see the data, and then that's it. And then otherwise it's just going to call into startup like it would otherwise. So what's the difference here as to why production is looking at slash identity slash and using that area? And these tests are not. I feel like when I stream, I have a much harder time solving problems. All right, so yeah, but setting options at login path equals this, make the path to probably go the right path, but you need to refresh your cookie. So you, okay, so you're saying, I got gotcha. you. You're saying that even though I changed it, I didn't wipe out my cookies. So perhaps that's why I'm still seeing the old behavior. I don't have any cookies. That's weird. Okay, well, I killed the cache here. All right, let's do it again. Empty cache, hard reload. All right, and then also, I'm gonna kill IS Express. Yes, boom. Yeah, not Googling enough. That's probably true. Uh, all right, so I killed IS Express, which means you're not running anymore. Poof, you're gone. So I've cleared cookies, killed IS Express, relaunched the app, start without debugging. I left in your cookie thing, didn't I? No, I took it out, because I'm an idiot. Uh, stop, 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 stop. All right. Destroyed QC. We're still trying your, your approach here, okay? So do that. Build that. Done. Did I remove the cookie line? What cookie line? I added in that. Is that what you're asking? There's that look at our cookie. So here's cookies, there's this, there's eShop's cookie, and this is just, this is the whole value, right? That doesn't contain any information about the login path, right? Everything else is just anti-forgery. So my understanding is that shouldn't tell the system where to redirect me, right? Because it's the server doing the redirect, not the client. So when I click checkout, it's still taking me to slash identity slash because uh, it doesn't know any different from from what the cookie's telling it as far as I know um, hmm. Normally you would scaffold in the identity, where is it built in the testing project? Well, the testing project isn't hosting the web app, right? It's just calling into the web app. So for the, the test project, it's, it's calling the pages that are in the web project. It's calling the areas that are in the web project, theoretically. The areas ought to work. 
So if I go to my test, and just as a as an option, if I do a get on the thing, like we'll just do it up here. Uh, var foo equals await client dot get async. Right, we're saying slash identity slash account slash login. I'm gonna guess that that's gonna work just fine. Var s equals foo dot content dot read string async. Okay. This should just do the right thing and fetch the login page. It should not be a 404. All right, so foo get back a 200 OK, so it did not 404. And if we step over and we look at string S, it's Interestingly, it's not a string, but it has a result that is a string. Um, and it's the login page, right? So, so that works. All right. Let's see. So the question is, why... Why does my system, when I say go check out, its identity authentication does not go to slash identity account login, it goes to account login, and it totally forgets the fact that it's using an area. It has to be something to do with how I configure it, I think. And so in here, all I'm doing is setting up, like really the only reason I'm even setting these up here is so that I can see the data, right? And that should be pretty much parallel to what Program CS is doing. So if we pull those up on different windows, different screens here, we say, okay, we've got a web host builder here, we got a web host builder here, and we call builder configure services, add any framework. Am I doing that anywhere? I'm sure I am somewhere, or have done already. Let me shrink this down a little bit. Logger factory, I'm not doing anything with the logger. Okay, so this builds it using startup first. Whereas I think this one hasn't called startup yet. After startup's been built in production, we create a factory for the logger, just because I want to log some stuff here. We get the catalog context, we don't create it, and then we seed it. And then we get the user manager, and we seed that. Right, and that's it. That's the whole thing. Uh, and that works. Over here, we add the DB context. And the interesting thing about that is that we're adding this DB context twice, but that like, because it's happening here and then it happens again in startup. Um, do you have this app that use cookie policy? I do in startup, destroyed QC. I don't have it anywhere in my uh, custom web application factory of startup. And the only thing that this custom web application factory is supposed to be doing is seeding data, right? So it does all this other work just to get to the point where you can see data. All right, so your question was in startup, do I have it? And the answer is 
I'm sure, yes. This, configure cookie policy options. Is that the same thing? I think that's what you're asking. I think I've got that. Google search. Redirects don't include identity. Maybe the way I'm adding identity is the problem. So in startup, where do I do add identity? Here. I say add identity, add default UI. Okay. And this should be run the same for either one. Interestingly, somebody on Stack Overflow here, uh, in answer to a question about this, um, has the slash identity account stuff here, but then they also add a route here for identity. Maybe I have that in one place and not the other, or maybe I just need that. That would be interesting. So in startup for my add MEC route, that's here. I definitely don't have that route specified. I didn't do anything about it in program CS either. I'm sure my custom web application factory doesn't do anything with it either because it just calls startup. Would adding that route help me at all? Who knows? We could try it. Okay, so we could have an identity route that goes to identity account, whatever action. In this case, account login. Let's just be the default. Um, maybe that'll work. These routes are used to generate URLs as well as to match incoming requests. So if it's generating the URL to use for the redirect um, and it's using it based on a route table, that might be the issue. And destroy QC thinks it's the add sign in manager. Remove it. Yeah, it's magic. The problem is purely to do with uh, how we're seeding data. Uh, in a real application, there wouldn't be all that seed data stuff in production, right? Like your production app is not a, a sample like this one. So your production app startup is certainly not going to have um, all this junk that I have in here for creating, you know, creating in memory databases for when you're running uh, in demo mode. Uh, it's also your startup app is also not going to have, uh, your production app rather, is not going to have all this junk in here to seed data. So yeah, there's some duplication in this example, but that's because we're looking at a, a demo app that d needs to have a bunch of synced up, uh, you know, it doesn't have a real database, so it has to have a bunch of seed data in it. And then for your test, well, in your test, of course, you would want to have a bunch of synced data. And in this case, we're using the same data as, as a matter of convenience, but 
in a real application, you certainly wouldn't do that, right? You'd have your real production database that your production app would talk to, and the only place you would have any of the seed data stuff would be in the tests, so they wouldn't look the same. A lot of things are proof of concept, so they do have the situation. Yeah, well, me too. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Um, but but by and large, for like 99% of real applications that aren't just proof of concept, there shouldn't be that much duplication. Uh, but I but I hear what you're saying, uh, and it is this um, this custom web application factory like this right now to me this is way too much code to just seed some data, and that that's what it needs at the moment. All right. So add sign in manager. You're saying that's what's killing me. Why would that be killing me? And where is it? Add sign in. It's not here. Destroyed QC. Come on, help me out. You're giving me hope here. Look at their test on. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, so the recommendation is. Oh, it's not that. Okay, fine. The recommendation is to go look at ASP.NET Identity. And look at how they test stuff, which is a good idea. They, they've done this. Identity tests, maybe. You got a you got a full URL, Fearware. I appreciate the uh, the help. Uh, they moved it away from there, didn't they? I, um, I mean, this is all targeting 3.0 at this point, so it's it's moved on. Uh, Sign in manager test, maybe. Most of these are probably not web tests. Oh look, they've commented out most of their tests. <laughs> Alright, these are not web tests. Uh, websites, identity default, startup. There's nothing there. Login test.cs. Uh, where? Functional tests. Okay. Great client. Okay. Register a user. That's great. Can log in with previously registered user. All right. What is their create client doing? Need to look at server factory. I don't know what's your problem right now. I've just jumped on the stream. All right, well, that's fine. Uh, I appreciate you trying to help. So, log in with this, can log in with that. All I'm trying to do is see why in my test I'm getting a redirect to a URL that's the wrong URL, right? And it's, uh, it's just off because it includes, it doesn't include the area in the test, in the system under test code. But in production code, it includes the area. So it goes to identity slash account slash login in the one case, and it just goes to slash account slash login in the test. And the test, as a result, is getting a 404 because there is no slash account slash login. It's under slash identity slash account slash login. So somewhere the routes are not correct, and we're getting that problem. That's not going to do it. That should be the same in both cases anyway. So it's using the same startup in both places. None of these tests here are really verifying what we're trying to do, I don't think. These are literally just checking to see if they can log in. Can log in, can log in, can log in. Or not. I don't have 
Octotree on this browser instance. Let me change to another one. And I can browse around and see what's next to this. Like maybe authorization. So here's some authorized pages, and it's going to say, hey, I assert that we start with slash identity slash account slash login. It's exactly what I'm looking for, right? Location.path and query. So I want that. Um, so let's look at your server factory of T. All right, where is that server factory? Infrastructure, yes. So in your server factory, you set the base address, that's fine. Set up a test database, add MVC, add cookie temp data provider. Mark the cookie as essential, I do that. Let's see if I need any of that. <laughs> hey Eric, how's it going? I'm trying to add a test to eShop on web and it's blowing up on me. Also you can see the green screen's not perfectly dialed in, but it's it's close. I'm looking at old code. I'm looking at old code here in ASP.NET Identity, or I'm looking at old code in my code, because I just did a get latest. Tests are now there. All right, I got you. Copy URL. Let's go here. Authorization tests. This looks awfully similar. Maybe old code, but it's still doing the same thing. Um, it's been moved. See above yet? Yeah, I saw it. Thanks. They're still expecting it to go to slash identity account. So, yeah, Eric, if you can tell me why this is not working, that would be awesome. So, in the real application, it goes to slash identity slash account, as you would expect. But in this basket page checkout thing I'm trying to do right here. Basically, you come in as a not authenticated user, you load the home page, which is really optional. We could skip that. Um, but then we do a post to basket index. Uh, I suppose the one good reason to do the home page load is so we can get this verification token. We do the post, and the post works. And we're automatically following redirects, so we, we skip looking for the redirect. and the next thing that should happen is this post to basket checkout. Um, because the user clicks on checkout on that page, right? And so when they click basket checkout, it's going to 302 redirect them to uh, slash, um, slash identity, right? Slash identity, slash account, slash login, but it doesn't. And instead, it sends them to just slash account slash login without identity on the front of it. Thanks for the help, Smeebook. You need to go to the identity page of the eShops one. I don't know. This is the eShop code that I'm trying to test. All right, so now in here, it's an option in start. Yeah, we, we tried that. It's ignoring our startup option. All right, so in here, there's this cookie login path right there. And we set that, and it didn't care. Is it because it's in the pages section? Well, let's say yes, maybe. I don't know. 
Uh, that's a good point. It is different because it's in pages, but pages should use all the same routes and everything, shouldn't they? Do we have those are views? Do I have a page for login? There's no page for login that's going to detect and find. And it works in production. Like the question is, why does it work differently under test versus in production? Right? I can show you here. We launch this thing. We say add an item to the basket. F12. Watch the network tab. Say check out. And look what we get. I'll make this a little bit taller. And you see we do a call to checkout with a post to slash basket checkout. That's great. And then we do a redirect to slash identity account login. Right? That's what we expect. You have the latest, I had to add some logic to allow pages for redirects to work. Uh, well, if, assuming that you merge that PR, I've got the latest, because i got the latest off master. I'm calling from the partial layout. So you tell me if I've got the latest. Are you, is your work still sitting in a PR? No, that's not you. So yeah, I've got the latest. Destroyed QC, got it. You got the solution? Need to remove add default UI. I was wondering about that. But why is it different in the two places? If I add the default UI, I'm gonna start up here. You think that's gonna fix it? that. Let's go look at our test. Okay, I don't need this anymore. Let's go ahead and see what this is. Default UI uses identity pages instead of yours. But that's okay. I want it to use the identity pages because I don't actually have a login page. I, I have. I want it to use identity's login page, right? Like we don't. Did we create a login page, Eric? Oh, we did. Uh, did not realize we did that. Okay, then you're probably right. All right, so let's see. Step over. I think we just did that. Still a 404 though. Um, weird. Best response to request message. Still going to account login. Right, we created from scaffolding so we could adjust it, right? We based our project on eShop and streams. Well, thank you. Uh, it's supposed to work. <laughs> All right, so let me see. We got rid of that. So what does it do in here for real now? We go here, we have 12, see the network, say check out. Now it just blows up, well, that's progress. Um, so you're right, that, that worked-ish for a certain definition of worked. Uh, now, now the two match. Uh, and production and the tests both don't go to the right place. So I guess maybe, hmm. I think that's all I changed was, was that one thing. I feel like we're really close. All right, so. In startup, we have that. When we add that default UI, what does that do? It's a default self-contained UI for identity and razor pages in an area named identity. Right, so this should add all the routing that I need for that. And if I don't have that in the other one where I do services add identity, that's going to be the problem. So I think the issue is that I do need that, but I need it here. And this is it right here. Bam. All right. So you're on the right path, fairware. Uh, 
just needed to do it here as well. Right? And that should do the trick. This uh, indenting is horrible. Look at that. Okay, that's going to fix it. Because add default UI adds the route. Exactly. So when I was looking at it and trying to see what was different, this was it. I just didn't see it. I blame all the people watching my stream that also didn't see it. Um, Alright, so where's my test? Basket page checkout, debug this thing. There we are. And we can step over it. And it's a 200. Woo. All right. And does it contain identity account? It does. Continue. The test passes. Party time. All right. So I'm going to do a commit because that's how I roll. And we're almost out of time. So let's go find my changes. And got test 90% working. For actually, that's that's the whole test. It works, All right? Got redirect to login if not auth test working. I should probably do some cleanup, but we'll get to that. Well, let's see. Get rid of those two lines and get rid of that breakpoint. We'll call that good. Commit sync. Uh, committed on master. I probably shouldn't have done that. But let's see, if we, let's see if I'm allowed to push to master. I think I am. Yay. Woo. All right. Um, that's about all I've got time for today. So I apologize that that was so awful. Uh, once you get one of these things working, though, then it's pretty much just, you know, repeat. Uh, so, you know, the next test should be much easier. And the fact is, you know, we didn't have a test for uh, the basket page checkout scenario. Uh, and you saw that there's some, some odd behavior going on there where it seems to lose the first basket that you add when you're anonymous. That used to work. Uh, so now that we have a test, you know, adding, adding three or four or five more tests that verify those different cases uh, will be much easier. So, cool. We, we at least got that working. All right, I gotta run. I've got some other uh, calls and things I gotta take care of, but uh, thank you all for bearing with me on this. Uh, hopefully it was worthwhile, and we'll, we'll pop this up on uh, YouTube afterwards so the ones that had to drop out can, can check it out later. So, thanks everybody. Uh, let's see, does anybody have a, a coder that's running right now that we should uh, raid? I'm still not very good at this whole raiding thing, but let's, let's see if I can raid somebody. So let's go to my dashboard and see who's on. Um, hmm. Pick a channel. Who's online? Have a good day. Thanks for the stream. Thanks, guys. If you stick around for two more seconds, I'm going to send you somewhere else and you can participate in a raid. I just got to find another coder or someone that's online. Um, I'm open to suggestions. Fritz is offline, right? Oh, he's hosting Ed Charbonneau. That'll work. So I will send you to Ed Charbonneau. Ed Charbonneau. Boom. Raid. All right, I'll see you guys. We're going to host Ed for a little bit. Uh, ready in five seconds. See ya.